Maybe the biggest game in the state between Division 7 opponents goes down tonight at Bob Wine Field where the Lucas Cubs, in search of a 10th consecutive playoff berth, need a marquee win to help secure a Week 11 home game, while Fort Loramie goes for a sixth win in their last seven outings as one of the hottest teams in Region 28. It's the Redskins and Cubs battling live and free exclusively on the OH Report anywhere the internet can be found. And it's all coming up next. I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why not? Guess who's back? Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? I still got it. Hey, hey, I need that senior discount. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> Unretirement? Who'd be dumb enough to do that? I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report.
evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, little children, dogs and cats, and welcome to the Mechanics Bank pregame show alongside the great Effie James. I am Brian Skaronski, and man, really critical game for both of these teams tonight, fighting for their playoff lives, and each team definitely needing a win to clinch a postseason berth, Effie, and I think if the preseason, or excuse me, the pregame chirping is any indicator of what we're going to see here early. Should be a fun physical game. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fun tonight. It's a little bit of a chill in the air. It's really uh, football season now uh, as you get ready to align yourself for the for the playoffs. And, and these teams have developed a little bit of an atmosphere uh, for each other. Uh, they've been playing each other here for a few years now, so uh, there's a little bit of uh, energy um, amongst the teams as we saw in the pregame. Uh, so it should be a competitive ball game, a physical ball game. I, I think we're going to see amongst these teams and uh, one that I think is going to be critical in preparing both of these teams for what they're going to see um, in the postseason. So it's going to be interesting to see who executes the best. That's the Cubs marching out onto the field in those sweet orange tops with the white pants tonight. Their opponent coming into this contest. What a gauntlet to start the season for them against Minster and uh, Versailles, 7-1, and 7-1, and one. and then they have to play an unbeaten in Columbus Academy, Effie. But since then, they've won 5 of 6, scoring 34-plus in each of those victories. So you like the offensive output that they've been able to put together here of late. Well, Coach Fittler it, it has done an outstanding job of uh, getting his team back together and making sure that they can, can rally after, like you said, a really tough schedule. Uh, in the beginning, uh, but, this, but this team that they're playing against has uh, been, they've been tested as well, and, and they have, they've been playing teams that, you know, we may not be familiar with, but after, after a tough start of their own, they have been able to get going and string together some wins uh, also, so when you get to this part of the season, you know who you are, and, and right now the Redskins know who they are as a team, and they know their strengths and weaknesses. And right now, you play to those strengths when you get to this part of the season. No, no use in trying to do anything new and fancy. Just be who you are and execute your game plan. And that's what we're going to see, I think, from the Redskins tonight. They've got a very exciting dual threat quarterback averaging over five yards per carry and almost eight yards per pass attempt. So both of those numbers, of course, you like that dude running your offense. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I like the fact uh, the low number of interceptions is, is really good, and the fact that they are such a they're, they're a balanced attack. Uh, he, he's got you know with the close to 60% completion percentage, he's over a thousand yards passing, which which makes them him a viable threat to pass the football. 14 touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, you know he that means that he knows how to put the ball in the end zone. So uh, they are going to bring a balanced attack here to to a field that that is all about ground and pound. So. It, they're gonna be, it's going to be a challenge for the Lucas Cup defensively uh, to try to, to hold this offense down. But Max, um, Max Maurer is, is going to be a challenge altogether for this Lucas defense. And you talked about the job that Scott Spittler's done with this team since getting off to that 0-2 start, just like the Redskins did, but quality wins over Smithville and Monroeville kind of highlight this stretch of five wins over their last six games as well. So it's been bounce-back season for both of these teams. Right, exactly, and, and, and that's what I mean. Coach Spittler has done an outstanding job, as he always does, with, with his team. And, and uh, after that loss to uh, uh, Lima Central Catholic and, and being able to uh, they respond to losses probably as good as any team in the area. You know, they're, they're able to bounce back and get back to who they are. And, you know, teams come into this place knowing what they're going to get, uh, but frankly, not being able to do anything about it. Uh, That's the problem. So, so, you know, and that is a credit to Coach Spittler, his staff, and the commitment to, uh, to, to excellence on both sides of the football in all three phases of the game. Well, you almost always know what you're going to get from our player spotlight tonight, brought to you by Mechanics Bank, Logan Toms. I mean, this dude, he, he, he's the straw in the engine on both sides of the football, no right. question. Yeah, Logan Toms is, is a tremendous athlete and a tremendous leader, uh, and I think that's what makes him special for this team. He's a great leader. He leads by example, and uh, his, his team follows him on the field and off. So uh, he's, a, he's a spark plug uh, for this Cubs team. And that will wrap up our Mechanics Bank pregame show as we are underway. Zach Dill with the opening kickoff return here for the Cubs. And we'll get our first look at their offense, led by Mr. Toms, Grayson Jackson, the signal caller, who 
has not been asked to put it up through the sky very often so far this season. Definitely they've gotten a bit more back to their roots. We saw the last couple of years they had a three-year starter at quarterback. They actually entered out uh, right. on a few different games. Right. Not quite as much as they ran it, but definitely it's wing tee, it's power yeah. football in a yeah. phone booth. And, and I, I love the way that they understand who they are. If they, they have a guy that is capable, they don't mind passing it, but right now they're back to their roots, like you said. Ground and pound. Uh, and they'll start with one of their big bruisers. That's Dan Hawkinsmith with the carry. Three-year starter for the Cubs and just a junior, too, so he'll be back next season. And he's got some girth to him, over 200 pounds. Yeah, and, and that's a great run on first down. There you get seven yards on first down, and, and that's just a straight, straight dive. There's nobody's pulling. It's a straight dive up the, up the middle uh, for eight yards, and that, that's a good play on first down. They're going to pitch it here to Zach Dill, stretching for extra yardage, and he's got a home and kitchen supply. First down. Take a second look on our TMS Plus digital marketing replay. And this is a kid, he's really been coming along here as of late. That way, at times, they don't have to give it to number two over and over again. Right, and, and that time you go from a, a dive play inside to stretch play on the outside, and that time he sprinted the whole entire line, stepped to the left side, and everybody sprinted to the left, and that uh, executed well, hat on hat, and they just beat, beat the defense to the front. Fresh set of downs, not a whole lot of wiggle room here on this first down run. Well defended that time by the Redskins. Bringing up a second down and long. And again, that time it was just a, a straight dive down the middle. That time uh, the Redskins really a stout in the middle, uh, committing a lot of guys. And, and Redskin, Redskins aren't small up front. They are, you know, got some good size up front, which is what you have to have. But you got to play with leverage when you're playing against the Cubs. They're going to come off low and hard. And this time they use the snap count and a little bit of motion in the backfield and they're going to get uh, an illegal motion first penalty on Fort Laramie. And this is where the Cubs get you because it's just such an unusual offense in 2023 when they see that motion from Tom's. I mean, look, Effie, I, I think six guys jumped. Right, <laughs> I, right. I'm not even sure who you throw the flag off. Well, there. because you don't know. They, they utilize the snap count so well. Sometimes they come under, they go quick count. Sometimes they go motion and they go long count. It, they utilize it so well. So Cubs into enemy territory here on their opening drive. First carry for Logan Tom's, and he reaches out for a home and kitchen supply first down. So the Lucas offense looking like they have for these last five, six weeks, turning up a lot of yards on the ground as they're already out to the 40. Next time the quick pitch, that time the Logan Toms, and he just finds a hold inside, gets the first down, the second first down of the drive. Beautiful fall night here in Lucas Valley, perfect football weather Absolutely. on hand here not a cloud in the sky and just a little bit of chill so it definitely it feels like it's football season and like playoffs are right around the corner you know and the thing that I like about you know watching Lucas play is you know they come and they line up and, and everybody understands their job they know what they're expected to do uh, and I love to see the running backs and the quarterbacks get involved in the blocking scheme I, I'm always amazed to see skilled guys getting involved in the blocking scheme and getting physical uh, up front. Pick up a four on first down. And the Cubs toss it this time to Toms. He's able to navigate through a small crease. I think he got about five more. So it'll be third down and short on the way here for this Lucas offense. Well, and if if the Redskins want to have a chance, this is what they have to do. They have to be able to get to third down um, to give themselves a chance. And then they've got to find a way um, to get penetration in the backfield uh, before the running backs get started. Because once those running backs get downhill, uh, it's going to be positive yardage. So they've got to find a way uh, to get people committed to the backfield. First third down of the drive for Lucas. And it's going to be Deal here to the near side. Keeps his feet and then tumbles forward across the 20-yard line. Red zone opportunity for the Cubs here on their opening drive. And a nice change up that time after, again, 
it's just such a mental game where they pound you inside, pound you inside, pound you inside, and then they pull a guard and they pull a guard and they uh, pin you inside and they run to the outside for a 12-yard pickup. Uh, great play call for the first down. Cubs have already chewed up more than four minutes on this opening drive. First time we've seen Jackson in the shotgun, and he's going to fake it to Toms. Grayson Jackson on the keeper. Tackled down low this time as he wiggles forward for maybe about three. Well, and, and I think I think that is that's purely just something, a switch up and something else to give the defense to look at. I, I, I'm sure Coach Spittler, is not, that's not something that he wants to stay in. It's just something extra to give the team to look at the defense to look at and have to prepare for um, because, again, it's just something that gives the defense uh, something else to study. You have to line up to it because they can sprint out of it. This time they do hand it to Toms on the jet sweep. He catches the oh, corner, wow. and he dives for the end zone, and he's in there, Effie. Touchdown, Cubs. 18-yard wow. run from Logan Toms. So the fireworks popping off overhead here early on. Wow. Take a second look at this one. Second play in a row that they lined up in this formation. They fake it the first time, give it to Toms on the second opportunity. And I mean, you know what this dude does when he touches yeah. the football. Well, when he turned the corner, he hit about the 10 yard line and he just hit, he hit a button. He hit a button that nobody else on the field uh, has and he was able to accelerate and get to the end zone. Uh, excellent run and great drive uh, to start by the Cubs. So Lucas leads it 7-0 after their opening drive. Logan Tops with an 18-yard touchdown sprint. Are you ready for the comeback? Lucas marches is down the field, capped off by an 18-yard touchdown run by Logan Toms as they lead it 7-zip here at home. And we'll get our first chance to see Maurer in this Redskins offense marching out onto the field with 80 yards of greenery in between them and a potential tie. Brian Skrotsky with you here tonight at Bob Winefield along with Effie James and you said there during that commercial timeout, boy, that looked easy. Yeah, that was that was an easy drive, and and you know that was uh, picture perfect. They established the run. They ran inside and outside, and got the hands in the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Great, great execution that time. Inside give here on first down, and how about Logan oh Tom's looking like a wrestler, picking him up with a double leg, and then. I think he took the back for about a four or five yard journey. Yeah. Well, they tried to run a trap play and Ooh. they never got to, to Tom's. They never got to him and he snipped it out right from the beginning. So no gain there from Will Holland on first down or actually this is Holland and the ball is loose. Just a mismanagement all the way here from Maurer. Yeah, that was just, he never had the ball. On the it almost looked like it was supposed to be a, some kind of play action because it, felt, it, it looked like the running back 
didn't know he was supposed to get the ball, but. Yeah, he certainly he had his hands down to his right, sides, right. not in the typical position that you would see right. with the right arm up there. So after the big loss, third down, 16, critical play coming up here for Fort Loramie. And they are just going to run it left side. And a big pop on the edge by the Cubs. So it's a three and out for the Lucas defense doing their job. And the momentum all in their favor here. As Cole Barhorse really goes nowhere. Yeah, that's that's a tough one um, when you got you that far behind the sticks, and um, you know right now you don't you don't want to make a big mistake this part of the field. Cubs trot two men back, waiting at their own 45-yard line. It's going to be a low punt, and hit right about at the 48. Take a red skin hop, and it'll lay to rest inside of the 35. So Lucas, who marched right down the field on their opening possession, looking for more of the same here as the offense is back out onto the field for drive number two. Well, and the thing about you know playing Lucas, it, it can be deflating to have them put together a drive, and, and, and most oftentimes their drives are long and, and physical, and they put a score on, and then you go three and out, and their defense, your defense has to come right back on the field, and, and more than likely it's going to be a long punishing drive. <laughs> you know, so it can, it can really be deflating to have to bring your defense right back on the field. So their defense here has to step up and try to find a way to stop this offense. Toms gets the toss. Gets behind his shoulder pads and burrows his way for about four yards there on first down. Carter Gasson on that last stop for the Redskins. And it is it is you know more of the same for for Lucas and and for uh, Fort Laramie. I would be looking to try something different. They're playing right now with two deep safeties, and I, I have no clue why. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that's their base defense, but I have no clue why they play with, with two deep safeties um, against this team. But right now they've got Lucas in uh, a position where they haven't – where you want to be in, third and somewhat medium. Uh, you got third and about four. So uh, this is a spot where you want to be sure tacklers and, and make sure you, ch you got a chance to get off the field here if you're the Redskins. Grayson Jackson on the season, just 25 pass attempts. I was over here for two games where they threw it zero times. Wow. Toms cuts back. Actually, it's Zach Dill with the carry this time. And doing Zach Dill type of things as he's got another Lucas first down. And again, this was a, a perfect opportunity for Fort Laramie to get off the field, but they just could not make the stop, and Lucas – with a great job of, of what we call head hunting on the stretch play, getting out, getting a hat on a hat, and deal finding finding gaps in the defense and moving ahead for the first down, knowing where the sticks are. Great run. Clock rolling closer to three minutes to go. Jackson with the fake, and he spins his way out across the 45-yard line. Nice run by Grayson Jackson after they pick up a fresh set of downs. And you see all the attention that Logan Toms gets mm -hmm. when they bring him in motion on that jet sweep. Open up a nice hole that time. Yeah. And you have to honor, you know, all the motion and all the, you know, everything that happens, you have to honor that. And then that's the difficulty as a defense because then they can come under and then go quick count and then they run a dive right at you. Second down short. And weaseling his way forward is Zach Dill. Looks like he's got another home and kitchen supply first down. And always impressive to watch these Cubs ball carriers just follow their blockers because Lucas, that's something that they practice every right. single day. With Scott Spittler as your head coach, you're, you're going to be doing some uh, blocking drills every oh, sure. all the time. It, it's a simple offense, and, and the great thing about simplicity in your offense is everybody knows where everyone is going to be. And for your running backs, it's, it's simple because you know exactly who to follow and where they're going to be. And, and 
Uh, there's a lot to be said about simplicity uh, on offense, but you got to have talent also. <laughs> In order to be simple, you got to be good. Big hit on Zach Dill here as he tried to catch the corner. Got met by Carter Gason. Yeah, that is a big play by Carter Gason, and those are the type of plays uh, that the Redskins are going to have to make in the backfield. He, he steps up here. Nobody's blocking him. He stepped up. He was mm. playing a little bit deeper as a safety. That time he stepped up uh, a little closer to the line of scrimmage and made the play at the backfield, and they, they've got to have more of that. Just a crazy individual effort that mm -hmm. time by Gason going through a couple of would-be blockers and making the hit. No gain there on first down, so behind the sticks just a little bit. And Tom's able to squirt through on the other side for about an eight-yard run here on second down. Exactly what the Cubs needed. Roger Hoying on the stop for the Redskins. And Logan Toms is, you know, he, he takes a lot. There's a lot of contact. And even though he is, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of wiry, but he is tough to bring down. He's got some strength. He runs with, with strength in between the tackles. So you really got to hit him to bring him down. Toms listed at 180 pounds. Definitely seems like he runs a bit more physical than that is. On this third down carry, didn't have a whole lot of space to work with, and that's the first time that we've seen Fort Loramie stop him on a third down, and they only need maybe about six inches here, Effie, so the offense, no question, going to stay yeah, out there. No way they're coming off the field here. No question. Though I think they are going to let the time melt down here on this first right. quarter and the time of possession. I think it's Lucas 11 and a half minutes, <laughs> Fort Loramie 30 seconds right. as they've got the lead heading into quarter number two. Sponsor local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. One quarter in the books, and I think if you wanted to show somebody outside of the area that's not familiar with Lucas Cubs football, what they're known for, Effie, <laughs> you might just want to send them the tape there of right. those first 12 minutes. Exactly. That is textbook Lucas football. Facing a big fourth down here, and they put Toms back in the quarterback position. Oh. And it looks like he's able to get just enough. Well, and... That time we did see the Redskins really, they committed a lot more guys to the line of scrimmage, and, and of course they would. It was fourth and, and short. But I, I just think that they, they've got to play that way. Uh, and, and if they're going to give up a big play over the top, then so be it at this point. Uh, they've got to commit more guys to the line of scrimmage and force uh, Lucas to do something else. Pre-snap flag comes in. And this is going to go against Fort Loramie, the second infraction against the Redskins. So it'll be first down five here for the Cubs as they mark the ball off down to the 25-yard line. Lucas on the year, over 2,200 rushing yards, only thrown at Effie as a team for just over 200. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, here's one. Hey. <laughs> They're going to add to that total, though. Zach Dill leaking out of the backfield. And he's got one of his few catches of the season. Catch number four for Dill. 
and he's just over 100 yards now in the receiving game. <laughs> Far and away the leading receiver on the team, too. Right. I was just, just going to say it's like seeing an, an eclipse or something around <laughs> here, but, but there we go. Which is coming to North right. Central Ohio Absolutely. soon, I'm told. Like, it's it's a pretty big deal. My wife's talking about Airbnb in the right, house. Right, right, right. Like, what? For a solar <laughs> eclipse, people's going to pay to come stay at my crib? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Toss it to Deal, left side, looking to get a block, and it's the quarterback, Jackson. I love that. I love that. Going to get some flags flying in, though, towards the end of the play. And it'll be the first one against oh, Lucas. It'll be a hold. Well, I think that time, uh, Dill really stretched it out. And because of that, uh, anytime you stretch it out that far, and I, I think you got to give credit to the Redskins defense. They stretched it out and forced him to the perimeter. And uh, we had one of the Cubs offensive linemen grab a little bit of jersey there on the outside. Uh, which brought the whole their first penalty. Cubs now behind the sticks here a little bit. First down, 15 coming up. Down, Cubs from the Fort Laramie 20 -yard line. And it looks like they're going to spread them out a little bit. Flank out Aiden Culler here to the near side. Referees stopping play just for a second, though. Having some communication. Oh, it looked like they had fourth down showing mm -hmm. over on the far side of the field. Of course, it is a first down here for Lucas. Just chewing up the time of possession. As Jackson calls his own number this time, able to catch the edge for a pretty nice run. Well, and, and Jackson that time done a great job of, again, stretching it out to the perimeter. But, again, this is why... Uh, the Redskins want to keep them in different formations. And, and, again, this is not something that they're accustomed to, but this is more of a traditional style defense so uh, or an offense. So the Redskins would like to keep Lucas in this offense uh, if they can uh, because this is something that their defense is used to seeing. And they'll fake it this time. Nobody Absolutely. bites on the fake. Jackson slung down in the backfield. Go down as a couple-yard loss and bring up a third down here for Lucas. Well, again, like we said, you get into a traditional offense. Now, right now you're in shotgun. You got three wideouts. That's traditional offense. And now Fort Laramie has got a little bit of normalcy that they're looking at. And now defensively, they you beat one guy. Now you now you beat one offensive lineman, and now you're in the backfield. And they, they made a play now on second down. Now you got them on third and long. And now Lucas is in a place that they rarely see. And now they've got to, you know, make a play call that is not normal for the Lucas Cubs. Offense is going to need 11. They can pick up a first down at about the three-and-a-half-yard line. Tight set. Deal comes in motion. They'll fake it to him, throw it back, and it's going to be dropped. Not sure. Well, I yeah, think they're going to say a, it's a fumble. Absolutely. So I think he threw it back. Aiden Culler. I was thought the he threw it target? back. I, I thought he may have threw that ball back. Let's see this Let's again. See. Let's slow it down. So color turn kind of makes a football move. I, mean, I know it's not the NFL. Yeah. So the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's close, but they're gonna say catch, fumble, and recovered. Well, I think they call an incomplete pass. I oh, think okay. they decided it was an incomplete okay. pass. It's now on fourth down. Color, who just dropped the pass there, he is one heck of a kicker. He'll attempt a 32-yarder. Well, no matter what happens here, that is a big-time stop for Fort Laramie. They, um, Color's got plenty of leg. Ow. Looks like it's drifting just a bit, but it is up and pure. So with the made kick, it'll make it 10-zip. Lucas right. as to their lead. Are you ready for the comeback?
Two drives for the Lucas Cubs, both ending in points, though held to a field goal on the latest drive, but it's put away by Aiden Culler, who's got it teed up and ready to kick it deep to Fort Loramie, who just let this thing sail out of the back of the end zone. Brian Skronsky, Effie James with you tonight, hanging out up in the treehouse. One of the more unique settings in all of high school football in this area. And when it's this beautiful out, Effie, I, I kind of like the view. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice view and, and you know, a nice night for, for football. And, you know, I, I've become accustomed to the, to the wildlife here in the treehouse. <laughs> yeah, you got and, to. Uh, <laughs> I, I should have brought a bug zapper or yeah, something. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Got to be a little bit more prepared. Uh, always interested in the in the new species I always see back here. Oh yeah, they got their own <laughs> little ecosystem going back behind here. If you look across to one side, there's moo cows. You look on the other side, there's a rooster. I mean, it's pretty much like a petting zoo. <laughs> and the cubs too. Pretty ferocious up front so far tonight. Held Fort Loramie to a three and out on their opening drive. And a nice stop there on first down. Basically no gain on the play. Gain on that last play brings up second down. Fort Loramie from just outside their own 20-yard line. Redskins send one receiver out wide, and now they'll flick it to him. Will Holland with the catch and run. And Lucas again has forced a third down. Zach Winters on the stop for the and Cubs. That, the first, the run was to, to Holland. This time they, they passed it uh, on the perimeter to get the ball in the hands of Holland. Holland, who is their uh, leading rusher uh, on the season. Uh, but right now they find themselves in a third and long. They really want to keep this drive going if they can. They got to stay on the field, but not going to be able to execute. Incomplete on the pass from Maurer. And he had a man out here. You see they moved yeah, the pocket. It's pretty did. nice execution, just didn't hit the pass. Well, and I, I think for Maurer, it's, it's important for him. He's got to get a little bit further, uh, get his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage, and that is a much easier throw. He made that a tougher throw than it had to be. And overall for the Redskins, they've got to do a better job on first down. You know, that first down play where they picked up just a yard really hurt them. And, and you got to be able to pick up uh, more yardage on first down uh, to give yourself a chance uh, to move the ball because they cannot continue to do have three and outs against this Lucas. You know, you give the ball to Lucas, you may not see it again for the quarter, you know. <laughs> um, and, and that's just the way they play. You know, you give the ball to them, you you know, in real time, it could be a half an hour before you see the ball again. So, um that's why it's so important that you, you win first downs against their defense and try to sustain a drive just to keep your defense somewhat fresh. And we didn't even talk about this, but that was my key to the game tonight for right. the Redskins. You got to win Absolutely. first down so yes. far. No bueno. Right. And then getting the Cubs off schedule, they've pretty much been, you know, moving to the rhythm of their own beat. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the one time they did, the penalty that the Luke, Lucas got, uh, got them off schedule, and they, they were able to hold them to a field goal. So um, I could say we know what we're talking about. <laughs> it's rare, so right, I'm glad right. that's documented <laughs> and not on the Internet. <laughs> First down run for the Cubs. That They've definitely been giving themselves a great chance Absolutely. at second and shorts. They've seldom Except faced the third downs. Down. And you see a 10-yard run there to start yeah. off the drive from Logan Toms. Yeah, that's that's power power football. And, you know, Logan Toms is, you know, he runs behind his pads. That is textbook running behind your pads and using your blockers well. Tom squirts through a little crease again, and he's so good at that. Looks like there's a couple of guys on him. Well, because there are, but he's still able – to just scoot through, get skinny, and then keep right. those legs moving. Yeah, and, and I love the fact that, you know, all the Cub ball carriers understand, you know, they, they have such great ball security, and they they all fall forward at the end of their runs. You know, so they'll be hit with a maybe a four or five yard game, but they always fall forward to make it a seven or eight yard uh, pickup. So, you know, and that's stuff that's just practice. 
Second down short. Dill, the man in motion. They'll fake it to him. Jackson with a burst to the outside. Here's Grayson Jackson. Could be off to the races. 10-5. Touchdown, Cubs. Get the fireworks ready. 52-yard house call. And it's an unbelievable start here at home for Lucas. Wow. First of all, this is great ball handling right here. You know, he, he drove... And it, if you, what you didn't see is the front side safety took the bait. When he faked the ball to the uh, halfback running the jet sweep, the front side safety, who should have been there to make that tackle, had took the bait, and which made a was supposed to be a good play into a huge play. Uh, so great ball handling that time by, by the quarterback. And again, great speed on the perimeter. And... You know, that's one of the one of the things that people don't talk a lot about uh, with the Lucas athletes is their speed and athleticism. But, you know, Logan Toms, Grayson Jackson, these young men have speed. You know, they also can run. And that was on display there in that, in that run there. And if you get guys like Jackson going so that you got the yeah. three-headed monster, this Lucas offense, it's really tough to key yes. on anybody. We Absolutely. haven't even seen Tim Daly yet, who's averaging almost 11 yards per clip. So the cupboard, it's just completely full of different ingredients for Scott Spittler and utilizing them in different ways here tonight. I, I like how they're mixing it up a little bit with some of their strategies. A couple of passes thrown right. out there, Effie. Right. And so far, everything seems to be tasting good in Coach Spittler's cookbook. Well, and I think we, we can't lose the fact that the reason why it goes the way it goes is because they're able to control the line of scrimmage. And, you know, the guys up front um, are winning the battle up front. You know, everything, they're getting great push off the line of scrimmage. And the initial contact is not making – you know, the, the Fort Laramie defenders are not touching the backs until they're three or four yards uh, on the other side of the ball. So uh, when that happens, you can't have anything but positive plays offensively. So uh, Fort Laramie has got some, some adjustments to make here defensively if they want to have any chance to uh, get back into this ball game. Skins will be seeking their first first down as well. And this is just going to be their third drive of the game. If you were halfway through the second quarter here, as Lucas really has munched up a ton of clock so far. Well, I'm, I'm going to say this, Brian. They, they have got to figure a way here uh, to sustain a drive. And, and I don't know if they've got to take a shot here um, during this drive, take a deep shot, or uh, but they've got to find a way to maintain or sustain a drive because they cannot continue to go three and out. Um, and continue to give the ball back to Lucas. So uh, they got to try to do something different here to maintain this drive. From the gun, Maurer just hands it off up the middle. And one of the better plays that we've seen on first down tonight for the Redskins. So they'll pick up five and make this second down a little bit easier. Yeah, and that's a great pickup there on first down. And, and that's what you need, um, a positive pickup on first down. It opens things up for you on second down. Now if you want to get to the perimeter, maybe now if you want to throw that swing pass on second down, um, things like that. But it opens things up for you on second down to where you have a chance to maintain your, your drive. Two back set again. They'll keep it on the ground. Lucas, someone burst through and made a big play in the backfield. So third down quickly yet again, and the Cubs dialed in right now up front. Absolutely. And defensively, you can tell the, the Cubs are well prepared uh, uh, for this offense. You know, they are getting great penetration. They're doing the exact opposite of what Fort Laramie is not able to do. They're, they're committing guys to the line of scrimmage. They're winning their battles up front, and they're getting great penetration into the backfield. Four yards needed here for Maurer. As he pushes to the outside, late flag comes in here from the near side of the field. And I think where he's marked, it's going to be a little bit short. We'll have to check and see what the infraction hold. is. Okay. Looks like we're getting a hold here on the offense. And then since it'll be fourth down, I see Coach Spittler talking to his staff. Do you want to decline this and allow him to have a fourth down and short or back him up? Yeah. Interesting. Well, it's, yeah, it's they have not had see. any success moving the football, so I think both are actually okay. Right, and they're, they're right. going to decline it, Effie. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that's a that's a good move. I, I think they have to give them fourth down. And, and to be honest, if I'm Fort Laramie, I go here. I I, I can't go three and out again. You sense it getting uh, away from yeah, you already. Yeah, I, I can't. It, it, it's, you know, I've got five and a half to go here in the half, and um, I cannot give the ball back. i got to do what I can to uh, to maintain this drive. They got Holland into the left tip here of Maurer, checking the sideline, yeah. and it's going to be a timeout taken here. And they went hard count there, tried to get Lucas to jump off sides, and, and they didn't. So they may still yet punt this ball away. But um, if, if I'm the Redskins here, I, I don't. I go ahead and go. Uh, I, get, I get my best call right now for the four, four yards needed. Um, and I try to sustain this drive uh, because right now uh, this game can get away from me. And, uh, and, and for Fort Laramie, they're in a position, at, at, even though it's 17-0, uh, they haven't been able to, to open up their offense at all because they've been behind the chains and uh, they haven't had a chance to, to get their offense going and get their, their quarterback going, who is, as we saw from his stats, who is a, a solid player. So because he hasn't had many snaps, many reps, he hasn't had a chance to get, get his feet under him as a quarterback. So uh, he needs this drive uh, just as well as the entire offense. So this is why I think it's, they're going to go ahead and go uh, here on fourth down. Arguably the biggest play of the night so far. Maurer brings a man in motion. Three receivers to the near side. He rolls that way, looking, fires, and intercepted. I think Absolutely. it's going to be picked off. It is. Flag comes in after the play. But it's definitely going to be a change of possession. I tell you what, Brian, when he rolled out. Yeah, check this out. William Wetzel reads this all the way. He's keeping his eye on the quarterback, and that's thrown basically right to him. Yeah, he had he had his receiver open right away, and he held it about two beats too late. Um, and they rolled him to his left, which is again that's that's a bit difficult. But they tried it on the other side, and I thought he threw it too early. That time, I thought he held it <laughs> too late. Um, but again, it's a good concept, but. You have to throw that ball on time. And the dead ball foul actually is going to even go against Fort Lormy. So yeah. the rich get richer here. Lucas with a 17-0 advantage. Wetzel with the takeaway. And they're going to be, I think, inside the red zone here after they march this baby off. And, and that's a great catch, by the way. By what? <laughs> I mean, that, that wasn't an easy catch. He caught that thing over the shoulder. So that's a uh, nice play. Uh, for that interception, but you know, even though you know it turns up being uh, ends up being a turnover, I don't question them going for it on fourth down there. They, I, I feel like they had to do that, trying to make something happen uh, to maintain that drive. Right now, the defense have got to uh, try to dig in and, and try to keep the Cubs out of the end zone if they can. Already a three-score game, Lucas, just on the outskirts here of the red zone from the 22 yard line they'll snap it and off the toss a lot of bodies there in the scrum and Tom's maybe picked up one yeah that time they were able to get some penetration inside and wrap up Logan Tom's right there at the line of scrimmage and you know over over time you know, when a team keeps running the same concepts at you, you can, you know, kind of figure out the flow of what where a play is going to come to you. And, and that time they've done a great job of getting uh, getting some penetration right at the point of attack, bringing up this second and long. Dill split out here to the near side. He comes in motion. Jackson hands off. Zach cuts back. And gobbled up at the second level. More flags on the field. And a couple of Redskins a bit slow to get up. Well, this is a great job out here by number 25, A.J. Siegel, 
Uh, watch him. You, you can't see him there, but he forces the play back inside um, and and really, I think, forces that, that hold penalty. Um, and, ag again, this is the same situation on the previous um, drive where the, the Cubs were driving and a penalty uh, set them back and they end up having to settle for a field goal. So uh, that time Fort Laramie's defense stepped up, made a good play, and forced to play back inside. And you got to hold and put them behind the sticks, which is what they have to do, get them off the schedule and, and try to keep them out of the end zone. So far, the only thing to slow down the Cubs have been themselves here on offense as Jackson goes to the air. Another completion. And it's a legacy gross with the grab. And he may have enough for the first down. Knocked out of bounds right at the sticks. Excuse me, that's, that's a deal with the catch. Third down about a yard for the Cubs. And definitely has been the favorite target of Jackson all season long. And Deal's going to have it again spun down before he had an opportunity to get to the outside. And right at the line of scrimmage, so the Cubs with a fourth down situation on the way. Yeah, great penetration again by the Redskins. We're able to snip out the perimeter play. And, and what has happened here in the last few plays, the Cubs have gotten away from um, the straight-ahead dive, and I think that's due to – down in distance they've had to uh, but that plays into the hands of the Redskins uh, that gives them a chance to run some things down from the backside which is what they were able to do in that play and force another field goal looks like coach Spittler and his staff are going to take a timeout I'll take a quick second and dive into our Facebook and YouTube and see what you guys are talking about out there in the chat section I see we've got Daniel Stotts, always our number one Cubs fan out there, says let's go Cubs. Mary Deering agrees. Kay Hogue watching from Sydney, Ohio. Good luck to Lucas. Dave Montoya says go Lucas Cubs. Go Cubs, go Cubs from Patty and CeCe. Oh, we do have a Fort Loramie fan out there. Hey, Jen Lynn. Kim Reed, let's go Lucas Cubs. You've got this with a whole bunch of heart emojis. Melissa, go Cubs as well. So a very pro-Lucas viewing audience tonight. Danny Boyd as well. And Michelle Banks-Zellner. Jeannie, though, getting in right now, says let's go Skins. So we got a few from out of town tuning in tonight, and that's why we do it, so that people all over the galaxy can watch high school football live and free. And this is a big one in terms of you look at the playoff positioning in Region 27 for mm -hmm. Fort Loramie and certainly for Lucas in Region 25. I mean, a win here for either of these teams vaults them into a position where they would be hosting in Week 11. Oh, boy. As we get some flinching up front. They called time. I'll wait. I take that back. Yeah, they decided. Well, Lucas decided instead of the field goal, they were going to come out and go for it now on fourth down. And the motion has caused... Uh, Fort Laramie to draw sides a couple times as we've seen tonight. So the Redskins coaching staff called the time out uh, there that time to let them know. So we'll see what uh, Coach Spittler decides, whether he decides to continue and go for it again or whether he bring, brings out the field goal unit here on fourth and fourth and short. Already with a three-score differential, it stays that way with a made field goal, of course. Mm -hmm. So kind of like the decision to keep the offense out there. You only need a yard. Your offensive line has been devastatingly awesome so right, far. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I There would be no question. Uh, keep your off offense out, and there's not a play in your playbook that has not worked tonight. <laughs> Uh, so um, your offense is made for fourth and short. 
They're going to give it to the up man straight ahead. And I got to imagine that's Hawkinsmith. That's usually their bruiser. Actually, well, oh, boy. That, that far side referee is coming in short. He is coming in short. I could tell when he came in, he was coming in short. It just looks like a rugby scrum out there. Yeah. So it's so he difficult. It. He didn't get it. Short of the first down. Fort Laramie will take over on downs. So a big stop here by Absolutely. the Redskins defense. Absolutely. Keep it at just a 17-point lead here for Lucas. Well, that's a big stop for Fort Laramie and a and a should be a confidence lift. And and right now, your only goal right now is to get something positive going. Uh, on offense and to get a first down. You know, if you can get out of this half and get a first down, that should be your goal offensively uh, is to move those chains uh, here before halftime. And that would be a win for this offense to prove that you can move the chains against this defense. That would give you uh, a lot of confidence going into the locker room. They'll move the pocket here near side. Cubs tracking in, and Maurer takes off and stumbles forward maybe to the line of scrimmage. Well, and you can see on this play, they found something on film because when you, 15 has been open every time when they run this play. So they found something on film that they like. They just haven't been able to execute it. Um, they haven't been able to get the quarterback and the receiver to execute that play, but he has been open on that rollout. Maurer again getting chased down from the backside. He'll leave the pocket, smashed as he exits by Hawkinsmith. And the Cubs again bring up a third down as zero first downs allowed so far to Cub, Fort Loramie. The Cub defense is just so aggressive. I mean, they once they sniff out what you are doing, they attack the football. I mean, they get a lot of hats to the football. They play very disciplined uh, defensively. So third down nine here for Maurer in the offense, looking left all the way. Now the pocket collapses, and he loses his feet. And the referee's going to mark him down in the backfield. Looked like he kind of just mismanaged his footing here, as we'll see on the yeah. TMS Plus Digital Marketing Replay. I think they were trying to set up some kind of a, um, not a throwback, but uh, it looks like they were th running a what they call a stick play where they had three hitches to the backside and the quarterback just couldn't get his, his footing. The clock stopped at a buck 44. So, yeah, Lucas is saying we didn't call a timeout. And now they will. Yeah, the clock should be running. Interesting. Because that was essentially a running play. It's just funny that the Cubs are like, hey, the clock's not running. <laughs> right. well, you know what? Let's go ahead and just keep it right where it's at. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, I'll dash over to YouTube real quick. And say what's up to Renee Cooper, who's cheering on the Cubs. So is Ryan Glesner, says go Cubbies from sunny Fort Mill, South Carolina. Sunshine sounds pretty nice, though it is comfortable out here tonight up in the treehouse. LC with some uh, bells, some dinner bells maybe? Uh, go Cubs. <laughs> Kathy says go Cubs, watching from WPB Florida. I'm not sure what that acronym is, you know? West Palm, w West Palm Beach? Beach. Oh, man, that sounds glamorous. Yes, sir. Jenny, it's Laura me. Not Laramie. She she let you know a couple times, Effie. Fort Loramie. Loramie. Okay. And uh, Con Zach Dill, <laughs> number one from Jim Smith. He's actually number four, but I see what you're saying. I follow you. Man, like, this is one of the better defensive showcases I've seen right. through nine weeks so far. Lucas is going to hold Fort Laura, I mean, Lord. without a first down here in wow. this first half. How about that? And they're going to have to punt it away. Fair catch called for, and it's already in plus territory at the 40-yard line. Wow. And, you know, that is the absolute worst-case scenario for the Redskins than to have to, when you got the ball back with just over two minutes, 
in the half and now have to give it back uh, to the Cubs within this type of field position with another opportunity to score, uh, to put another score on the board before the half. Uh, so now you're going to ask your defense to step up one more time yeah. um, before halftime to keep it at 17. They'll motion Toms. They'll try to run in behind him. Hawkinsmith lays a block on the edge. It opens things up for Jackson, who darts out to about the 30. 10-yard dash here to open up the drive. Damian runs on the stop for Fort Laramie. And it's a good, strong run by Jackson. And First again, just so tough to take down, falling forward. And another first down for the Cubs. Clock rolling to about 90 seconds. Jackson, the ball carrier this time, and throws a little stutter step. Nice, nice. move. Another first down here for Lucas, keeping the offense on the run. Well, see, this is a great block. They double team the front side linebacker. Uh, that is Dill and Logan Toms with the critical block on the front side linebacker, and that really springs the play. Uh, Grayson Jackson, again, just does a great dip move in and out, gets to the outside, 12-yard pickup, and the Cubs are on the move. Jackson this time looking to go to the sky. He tosses, looking for Dill again, this time double teamed, and that's his first incompletion of the night. Broken up by Lewis Hart. Bit of a dangerous pass. Right. And, you know, that's something that, you know, you could tell the Cubs don't do that very often. But uh, when they do roll out, they put their players in the best possible position. They uh, roll him out. They always give Jackson an opportunity to run. So it's never kind of a thing where you got to throw it or else. It's always an opportunity. Okay, you got this pass, but you'd all, you can always run. Jackson again here on second down to the teeth of the defense, and he's going to be shoved back. Able to, to maneuver for maybe two or three. And then the Redskins, about three of them, able to force him back. And the clock still winding as we're getting closer to 40 seconds to go. And Fort Laramie has played well, actually, in the red zone. Defensively, they've played well in the red zone, um, at least on this end, keeping what they call a late timeout here uh, by the Redskins uh, but as they try to keep them off the board here in the last 30 seconds of the half. Uh, but they've been able in the last couple drives uh, to keep them out of the end zone uh, on this side of the red zone anyway. Uh, they've been able to play a little bit stout defense um, in the red zone. with, And they've got a little bit of help from the Cubs with some, some penalties. But I, I think defensively they found something um, with this interior lineman. And when the, the field shrinks, it makes it a little bit easier. You can play your safeties a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage, and uh, you can commit more people to the line of scrimmage naturally. Uh, so it makes it tougher to run. But um, I feel like the Redskins should be playing that way all the time. All the time. Uh, so uh, we'll see if they can get another big stop here on third and long. They've certainly tightened up when it's got down into the red area. Here comes Jackson moving the pocket to the right, and he throws over to the sideline incomplete. And here comes the kicking unit yet again here for Lucas. And that's, again, that's a, that's a win for uh, Fort Laramie. If they, if they can, anytime they can see, you know, even though Lucas has got, an outstanding kicker. I mean, <laughs> their kicking game is, is outstanding. But um, they've done a, a really good job in the red zone with their red zone defense um, of tightening up and kind of a bend-don't-break type of defense when they got down to this end. Um, 
Aiden Culler puts it up, and that one is good as well. So two for two in the kicking game for field goals, and uh, two for two on PATs as well. On the season, Aiden Culler now four out of six. Twenty to zip in favor of Lucas, and I gotta say, Effie, doing my research these last two days on Fort Loramie, just chit chatting with the other OH reporters before I came out here, thought the Cubs were in trouble. I said, yeah. uh, you know, they typically rise to the occasion every single time. I doubt them. However, really tough schedule from what I've seen. And I, I like Fort Loramie. So some of the video that I had watched hasn't looked like the same team. They've never been able to get clicking on offense yet. Right. And, and I think that is completely due to the early three and outs, the fact that the offense has not been able to get gain any kind of rhythm when, you're, when your quarterback uh, can't get in the rhythm and you can't get your passing game going. Fort Loramie is a balanced attack. You know, when you look at their – their, their games, their statistics, you could tell they have a balanced attack. They run the ball as well as they um, pass the ball. So when they're, they, they're not able to do that on offense and not able to show that balance and get a rhythm on offense, um, they, they can't really have any impact on the game. And they just have not been able to do that. And Lucas has got them now in a hole where they've got to press a little bit here, and, and, and that's the, the biggest issue that I see. And so now they've got to figure out some things here in the halftime locker room, and, and if I'm them, I take a hard knee and uh, go into the locker room and try to figure out defensively um, what to do uh, against this Lucas offense and um, to stop these drives. Uh, but it looks like they're not going to take my advice. They're actually going to go to the sky here. <laughs> and they put it up down the far sideline. It's going to be broken up. Incomplete on the play. And maybe now, yeah. with just 13 seconds, might think about just taking this one into the half. Well, I, you, know, in, you know, you can tell that this is what they do. But... I say this is what they should have been doing. You, you know what I mean? I, 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 I just think that this is the style of offense that they are. But, um, you know, either way, they're going to have to go in the locker room, figure some things out. And defensively is what they're going to have to figure out because uh, they're going to have to play some complimentary football. Their defense is going to have to figure out how to stop, um, how to get off the field. And then offensively, they're going to have to figure out how to stay on the field. Um, to make this a competitive ball game. Still four ticks remaining up on the clock. They're at the 30-yard line. Still looking for their first first down. And they can get it here with just about a yard and a half, Effie. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little confidence booster if they just run it straight ahead, pick it up, even though it'll end the half. They will indeed. Got it. Put it in the hands of Holland. And that will move the chains, but it will also move us into the half. 20 zip, the Lucas Cubs on top as they were dominant on both sides of the football, really controlling the time of possession. We'll take a quick commercial timeout. When we come back, both marching bands are going to perform. We'll also have stats, analysis, some scores from around the area. Get you ready for half number two. You're watching live and free high school football exclusively on the OH Report. I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why not? Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa! I still got it! Hey, hey, I need that senior discount. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> 
Fun retirement. Who'd be dumb enough to do that? I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Blinding lights by the weekend. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Please give a round of applause for the 2023 Lucas Marching Band.
wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why not? Yes, he's hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? Hey, no! I still got it. Hey, hey, I need that senior discount. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> unretirement? Who'd be dumb enough to do that? I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. High School Football Broadcast brought to you folks live and free. Thanks to our amazing sponsors. Big shout out to Ohio Valley Manufacturing. Have engaged heavy gauge stamping and precision blanking services. They are hiring now. Click on the link to their website down in the description. 
BS Media Productions, do you need a commercial to showcase your business or promote that you are hiring? Well, they are the most affordable, high-quality production company in North Central Ohio. Click on the link to go to their Facebook page, and uh, you'll get me. That's me, BS. I'll come out and make a commercial for you. Mechanics Bank, Richland County's only independent community bank. TMS Plus Digital Marketing, digital marketing for local businesses. Frito-Lay, driven and inspired by one purpose, food that matters for life's moments. North Central State College, providing individuals with the knowledge, skills, and inspiration to succeed in their chosen paths. And Scout Construction Services, LLC, make sure that you contact them for all of your upgrades that you need at your house. They do kitchens, bathrooms, decks, all sorts of great things. Josh Mobley's the guy over there. Check out Scout Construction by clicking on their website down in the link. We'll be coming up in just a moment with your halftime stats. We welcome you back to Bob Winefield for our Mechanics Bank Halftime Show. Ah, that's better. Better banking and uh, better offense in the first half for Lucas compared to Fort Loramie, of course. Man, what a differential that we saw and on both sides of the football. The Cubs, they just came out. They were aggressive, Effie. They were winning at the point of attack. Just it seemed like everything they did kind of worked. Yeah, and, and right from the beginning, they set the tone uh, with that first drive. Um, they were very physical up front, and they said, this is how the game is going to go, and, and that's pretty much how it was going to go. And when Fort Laramie got a chance to get the football, they went three and out, and that kind of set the tone for their offense as well. So, and, and the stats say the same. So let's take a look. Here are your first half numbers presented by Mechanics Bank in just that one first down on the very last play of the second quarter picked up by Fort Laramie. And then on the other side, Lucas they threw it a couple of times, a couple of nice completions, but we know what their bread and butter is. Right, right, absolutely. You know, the 200 rush yards is not that surprising. It, it is, you know, holding, you know, a team like Fort Loramie uh, to the 34 total yards and a half. You know, you know, it, it's one thing if a team does one thing well and you're able to – this is a team that, that can throw and run. So they were able to contain Fort Loramie in – everything that they do and that's impressive that that is what's very impressive so um you know and they didn't hurt themselves you know even the penalty yards they had a couple penalties and, and what those penalties end up doing was instead of going in for touchdowns the cubs had to settle for field goals um but that's what the the stats really show is that they were able to dominate defensively uh and uh the pass yards are, are what they are we do with what that was going to look like but the most the most telling thing about those stats to me is the total yards for the Redskins and that is what surprises me out of, out of anything I, I thought for sure I said well if they are able to stop their running game well that means that's going to open up some passing lanes for Max Maurer in this passing attack for the Redskins but uh, not so uh, not <laughs> yeah, so the Redskins the have, case. they have not been able to pass the ball um, nor run the ball against this Cubs defense Lucas looking to win their sixth win 
over their last seven games, as is Fort Loramie. So both of these teams trending in a positive direction after coming out of the gates 0-2. Plenty of playoff points are up for grabs here tonight. Lucas right now in the driver's seat with a 20 to nothing advantage. We'll take one more time out. We will be back. Third quarter action here from Bob Weinfield. Stay tuned. Are you ready for the comeback? Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why not? Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? Hey, hey, I need that senior discount. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> On retirement, who'd be dumb enough to do that? Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report.
Both teams back out on the field for second half action here at Bob Wine where Lucas with a 20 to zip advantage through two quarters of play. I'm Brian Skronsky, Effie James is with me here tonight. Domination so far through a couple of quarters. The good news for visiting Fort Loramie is that they are gonna get the ball first and their last play went for a first down. So a baby bit of momentum and you always talk about taking a baby step. Well, they did that. Now it's up to them. Can they turn it into a big kid step and then maybe even a, a full adult gallop or something? Right, right. In their, in their last few plays, they were in a spread offense. Um, they, they used three or four wides, and they were able to spread out the Lucas defense. And, and I think that is their best chance to get into some wide open formations, uh, spread out this Lucas defense, try to find some gaps in that defense. They've been doing some spread out, some sprint out action with the quarterback. Um, but the last time they ran some straight dive um, with the running back, which was successful, uh, they got their first first down that way. Uh, so, you know, it'd be interesting to see what kind of adjustments they made coming out of the locker room. So, but they're going to ch get a chance to see uh, what, the, what the coaching staff felt like they needed to do because it's going to be on display at this first drive. So uh, with, for, for Lucas, uh, it's going to be important to stay aggressive. Uh, not fall asleep here, uh, because if it's me, if I'm if I'm Fort Loramie right here, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna be afraid to take a shot here, you know, here and you know, I'm not gonna try to throw the game away. I know it's not gonna be won or lost in this first drive, but I am going to, you know, get one of my best plays where I take a shot and try to get a big play uh, here to start the second uh, start the second half. Color kips it deep. And it's actually it's going to not make it into the end zone. So it's picked up here by Holland. How about this? And sometimes that's the best thing that can happen on a special teams play. It's something a little bit weird at the beginning. Right. And I thought he was going to spring this. He had a Oof. gaping hole. And i tell you what. If it wasn't for Dan Hawkinsmith, Hawkins from yeah. the back of the play there. Could have got ghost and really kind of yeah, changed the complexion of this game. <laughs> right. So now the Redskins offense looking to pick up just their second first down. As they'll put Maurer in the gun, he'll hand it off straight ahead. Here comes Holland. Yeah, and right away I like the energy. I, I That first play, the offensive line probably – came off the ball probably as well and as hard as they have all night. Uh, and, and that was uh, a positive first down play uh, for Fort Laramie. So second down five. Quick fake to the outside, and he's ripped down. Grayson Jackson coming in to make the stop. Tripped up by Grayson Jackson. But they only need two now to get the chain gang back on the move. That time, a nice counter action. Uh, they pulled the backside tackle and uh, ran off left guard. And uh, again, this is, they look more comfortable for some reason. They just look uh, more comfortable running this offense. And they are going to be close uh, to the first down marker. And I think they're going to move them. They are. Yeah, you see the big fellas up front getting just enough push. And it will go down as first down number two for this Redskins offense. As they'll give it to Holland here, trying to make his way to the perimeter. Yeah, and Holland has, you know, he is their leading rusher. And, um, you know, he gets the, the bulk of their carries out of the backfield. Good speed, very good athletically. And uh, he carries the load for them. And he is offensively, he's their leading receiver as well as their leading rusher. Um, and right now, this drive, he's got already two of their four carries, but they're going to lose big yardage. That time. Yeah, Cole Barhars never had anywhere to go. Tom snuffed that out immediately. 
And this is the situation that they've been in time in, time out here tonight. Third down, they're going to need about six here. Yeah, see, and I, you know, the, you're getting in rhythm, and I, I like it. I just I just thought you got a little cute right there. They tried to throw the, the quick shovel pass, and it put them behind the sticks here. Fourth down coming up here for the Redskins. Deal with the stop. And they're going to go. Yeah, it looks like the offense. You got to start taking some chances yeah. here down by 20. Not even a question. Fourth and nine, they're going. Holland fires over the middle. Nice. Good looking catch. And so the drive will stay alive here for Fort Loramie. Well, and he looked a lot more comfortable with the straight drop back. You know, I know they've been trying to roll him out, but that's a straight drop back pass and a little hook route right there inside the hash mark. And he delivered a strike for first down. On first down, they go back to the air. This time incomplete. And it'll bring up second down and 10. Well, and we talked a little bit about getting into a rhythm, and you could tell they're playing with even with a little bit of tempo here offensively. They're in and out of the huddle. Uh, they're running plays with a little bit of pace and tempo, and you can get a sense of what their offense really looks like now. Now that they picked up a couple first downs. Mauer rolled down, but not until after he gets out across the 40. But the Cubs quickly again bring it to third down. And put them in a situation where they need about four yards to move the chains. But as we know, it's four right. down territory four everywhere down territory. now, baby. Absolutely. They've got two downs to get these five yards. And they're going to snap it quick. And it's Holland trudging through. The right side, he gets three of the four. Will Holland has been doing a good job on this drive of getting his head down, getting positive yardage after initial contact. Bringing up fourth and two. And he'll dot the eye here. Mauer hands off, and Holland. Wow, are you kidding me? Boy, with the second effort. He dropped the football. <laughs> he literally dropped the football, picked it up, took a step back, and went and got the first down. Check this out, folks, on the TMS Plus digital marketing replay. Boom. Drops the football. Oh, wow. <laughs> and somehow, someway was able to pull it out of the grass there of Raiden Caudill and yeah. just squeak through for another Fort Loramie first down. Yeah. By far the best drive of the game. First time into Cubs territory. And they go with the flea flicker. Big hit on Maurer, but he delivers a strike. It. I love it. Hooking up here with Carter Ellerman. Biggest play of the night so far for this offense. Well, again, and, and this is where you can see what an offense really looks like. Ma uh, Max Maurer really looks comfortable. Now as a quarterback, he's straight drop back, a little flea flicker. Um, and now their offense is, is rolling. Looked like Grayson Jackson got in there, disrupted that one. As they'll give it straight ahead to Will Holland yet again. And and I'll tell you what, Brian, the, the Cub defense is really on their heels. They're on their heels, and and the Redskin offense is playing with a lot of uh, variety. They are going inside, outside. They're passing the ball. They are pounding them between the tackles. They're running outside. Uh, plays to the perimeter, then they're hitting them on the inside, so they're doing a lot to put pressure on this Cub defense, but this is a big play. Maxwell that time had nowhere to run as he got to the outside and Winters was waiting. Uh, 
That's a tough penalty. They're going to get a hold. Lucas is going to accept the penalty as well. Got him for a, about a three-yard loss. Could have potentially tried to make it third down there. Instead, they'll run back second. As they bring the ball out to the 23-yard line. Two back set. Holland, the deep man. They'll fake it to him. Swing it back here to the near side with Barhorst. And Jackson able to clip him down low. So a wise decision by the Lucas coaching staff to accept the penalty. You know, so tough to run those like jailbreak screens against this uh, Cub defense. They, they rally to the football uh, so well. So if you're going to run that screen, it's got to be done quickly. And the receiver has got to be able to get upfield uh, a lot quicker. Mauer looking left all the way. Now nice. zinks it over the middle. First down and way more. Down to the five-yard line goes Spencer Knopf. Pass is Spencer and the Skins Knopf. offense continues to move. Well, I'm, I'm sure Fort Loramie fans are, are watching like, okay, well, here's the team that we've been looking for. <laughs> and even with my limited knowledge base about them, this is a bit more what I was expecting. Right. Thought we'd see a lot of points back and forth, some fireworks, because cool. coming into the game, of those five wins that they've had so far this season, they're averaging about 34 per contest. Right. Right. Well, now they're on the lose again, so they haven't been quite as productive in the losses so far this season, Effie, but the, the offense definitely has not been a problem for them outside of about one game so far. Right. Well, and, and you can tell, again, uh, it, it's all about – this, this quarterback, Max Maurer, and his uh, him getting comfortable. He has now gotten comfortable in the pocket, and you can always tell that last play, you can see him bouncing in the pocket, and, and that always, that's always a sign of a quarterback getting really comfortable in the game. You hadn't seen that the entire game. He hasn't had time, number one, <laughs> to bounce in the pocket, but that last play right there, he was able to bounce in the pocket. Uh, he was able to find a, a crossing receiver and throw a dart. He was able to step right in and throw a dart. And that shows his comfortable, how comfortable he is in this offense. And now you can really see what this offense is all about. And I'm impressed. It, they got a lot of variety in this offense. And welcome. Welcome to, to the game, Redskins. <laughs> it, it, it's nice to see. But, you know, right now they got a big fourth down. Um, and they're going. They're going for it. No field goal try. They, they, want, they want the touchdown. Redskins are going to need about two. They'll keep it on the ground, and they are going to. Oh, boy. That's a big play. They got it. They're going to get it, yeah. They got it. Will Holland, the ball carrier. And it's Holland who's been falling forward every time he's touched the football so far on this drive. Well, this has been a change because right now what's happening up front, uh, the Fort Loramie offensive line has really taken control of this offensive line. Uh, the line of scrimmage. They have really, they playing with a lot more leverage. They're playing with a lot more power uh, up front. And it's Holland again He's across in. the goal line. So the Redskins with their first points of the night and a huge drive to open up this second half. That is big time. And that is kudos um, to the coaching staff, Coach Spencer Wells um, and his staff for going in at halftime and making big-time adjustments. And I, I'm not sure if they made adjustments, Brian, or it was just saying, listen, we have got to do what we do. Uh, and maybe they had a game plan coming in, and they decided to say, hey, forget it. We're just going to be who we are. Um, because now they look comfortable, and they came out and executed uh, and done a great job of making whatever adjustments they need to because those – they, they're offensively, they looked like they belonged in this football game, where in the first half, they didn't. So uh, kudos to the coaching staff and, and those players for coming out and, and executing well in that, fir that, uh, uh, that first drive. Fort Loramie marches down the field, cuts it to just a 13-point differential. As their coaching staff absolutely has them playing some more inspired football. 
were not able to stop the Cubs with the exception of one drive, though, in the first half when they got them on a fourth down and short. So that's the new task now right. for this team. You showcase that you can do it on offense. What impact can you have defensively against this wing tee that's been basically perfect so far? Right, and and that's the that's the big challenge. Can you come out and um, get a stop here defensively um, and give your offense another chance to get back on the field? How big would that be? If they're able to come up and get and get a big stop and, and get off the field here defensively and get their offense back out here on the field early uh, in the third quarter. So a seven-minute, 20-second touchdown drive capped off by a Holland touchdown. And Zach Dill goes flying there on the return. First down out to the 30-yard line here for the Lucas offense. First time we'll see them here in the second half. And as mentioned, they drove it into scoring position every time they had the football in the first couple of quarters. First and 10 comes from their own 30 yard line. So it's all about the adjustments here, and, you know, because defensively, you can't come out and do what you've done before. That, that didn't work. So, you know, it's all about what kind of adjustments you, you want to make here uh, against this, this Cub offense. They'll pitch it in the hands of Logan Toms. Oh, man, big hole. See ya. And he is going to go 70 yards. Nobody's got a chance at him. The Cubs need just one play to respond. That's how it's done. <laughs> Logan Toms going to make it feel like it's Independence Day out here as they load up the cannons. And there are the fireworks. Wow. You know what they say about big-time players, Effie? Absolutely. That is a big-time run. And right when they needed it. You know, it, it, it's a space where you got a team that's got some confidence coming, and that is a big play for the Cub offense. So Logan Toms gets ghost on the 70-yard touchdown run as Lucas looked like they were going to be in for a dogfight. Yeah. Maybe not, says Mr. Toms. But just great execution up front blocking, and Logan Toms turns on the speed. Are you ready for the comeback? Lucas with an immediate answer to the Fort Loramie touchdown as Logan Toms with a stick of dynamite goes 70 yards to the crib. And now the Redskins back with the football off the return there from Eilerman. And we'll see if they can duplicate what we just saw on the opening drive. Yeah, we're going to get a late flag here um, on the – on the kickoff, and I think we might have a a block in the back or uh, something happened after the play. Um, let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, after the play was over, one of the Lucas players uh, just had an unnecessary hit in the back, uh, and the referee – he looked right at it, and I didn't think he was going to pull his flag, and he did, he pulled it a little late, but he pulled it. 
And that's going to tack on 15 yards uh, to what was a, a pretty decent run back. So right at the 50-yard line is where the Redskins offense will take over. Fresh off by far their best-looking offensive possession of the night. And they'll put it into the hands of their quarterback. And the junior skips his way for just a couple here on first down. And how often do we see Daniel Hawkinsmith kind of win his matchup, make things yeah. tough? He is just tough to block, coming off the edge and causing havoc in the backfield. Nice tackle by Grayson Jackson there. Looked like Colin might have a little bit of space to the outside. Lead blockers. And Grayson snakes in for a tackle from the backside. Yeah. Redskins going to need about seven here. Trips here to the near side, all bunched up at the bottom of your screen. And they're going to quick throw it out to Holland. He's got some blockers forming. Takes a shot, pushed out of bounds, just shy of the 40. So it is going to be fourth down and short. Fully expect the offense to remain on the football field. No, good execution here. Nice blocking by the receivers. Uh, kind of a slow developing play, but it was really good blocking uh, by the wideouts. Uh, on that play, brings up this fourth and short. Full backfield here. Ellerman to the right, and it's going to be Holland. Not going to get the yardage that he needs. Matter of fact, drop down for a short loss on the play. Cubs defense coming through with the big stop. Yeah, just too slow developing play. I think the spacing was wrong, and... Uh, Max Maurer and Holland ran into each other in the in the backfield. In fact, I think he may even drop the football. Uh, but in either event, the, the Cubs are going to take over. But, uh, again, when you're in that type of short yardage, the Cubs are too aggressive. You can't have any timing issues in the backfield uh, because the Cubs are going to take advantage. 249 showing on the clock here in the third quarter. Lucas so far. One possession, one play, one tutty. And similar look this time. Somehow Dom's able to escape through the first contacts. Only picked up about two, though, on the play. Well, they ran the same play. That was a touchdown play last time. But this time, uh, the Redskins done a better job at the point of attack, uh, where the last time they ran it, um, we saw guys getting pancaked all over the field that time. Uh, the Redskins done a great job at the point of attack, forcing the ball back inside uh, where they can hold times for a short game. From the gun now, here comes Logan left to right, fake to him, straight ahead for Jackson. And he scores through for a Lucas first down. Jackson having one of his best running performances of the season here tonight. Yeah, again, great ball handling by Jackson. And again, like you said, when Tom's goes in motion, you you have to uh, you have to honor that, and the linebackers and safeties have to respect that with their movement, which opens up gaps in that defensive hole. So, uh, in the first half, Grayson Jackson seven carries for 89 yards in the first half. So uh, he's well on his way to a hundred yard game himself. Dill lowers the boom there on Ray Hoying at the end of that run. Another quick pick up a nine. Like you mentioned, just so many weapons and, and so many guys who can um, are hard runners and and but 
the key, like we talked about, the foundation is just the movement up front. The guys up front creating space and, and getting movement on the line of scrimmage. Jackson calls his own number, and again, we'll give the chain gang something to do. I think we... Well... Well, that ball came out, but they they said the the ground caused the fumble, but that ball did come out. We 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 saw one of the Redskins with it, so it did come out, but the official said it was a hit the ground first, and so they're going to give him the first down. Likely only see one more snap here in this third quarter. As the play clock ready. rolling down to six. Cubs seem to get a play in pretty quickly. Might have to burn a timeout. And they will do that indeed. So I'll check in with our fans out there and see what's going on here, beginning with you two. Great first half from Sarasota, Florida, says Joseph. Uh, John commenting on the size of the band for Lucas. and They don't have a lot of guys out there, but you definitely you commend them for making all that noise. Just, Absolutely. Uh, I, think, I think it's just like a, a six-piece or so. Uh, Joseph again, this game is not over. Tyson agrees, nope. Uh, but Tyson then says, nice stop by the Cubs. Indeed, it was. And then over on Facebook, Jeannie... Cheering on her Redskins. Debbie's on the opposite side of the equation. Jennifer Dill, of course, liking number four, what she's seeing from her. Michael watching from Los Angeles, California. Tim Kiever says go Cubs. Jackson under center. Tosses it. Here's Toms. Maneuvers his way inside the 30. Decent chunk of yardage here for Toms. Uh, what will be the final play here of quarter number three? After a long drive by the Redskins, Lucas answers with the Toms touchdown, and they'll take it into money time with a 20-point cushion. Are you ready for the comeback? I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Zach Dill opening up the fourth quarter with a big burst to the outside. We'll show you, well, it's popping out a battery. So let's see what kind of replay we have here. <laughs> okay. The, the, the grass is looking great out here, though, and Lucas. They're really taking great care of it. Flag is on the field as of now, Effie. Looks like about a 25-yard run. Well, and they had a deal on the pitch sweep there, and then they added on, I believe, what was a personal foul at the end, which gave them half the distance to the goal. So in any event, it is first and goal. 
inside the five. Cubs looking to add to their advantage here with Logan Toms getting low. Inching towards the goal line. No signal yet from any of the referees. And he must have been stopped just short. Logan Toms on the carry. See Tom just knifing his way wow. down near the end zone. How's he not in? Looked pretty darn close, <laughs> didn't it? Right. Allows more time to come off the clock if you're right. Lucas. Right. And it was a bit of a roll reversal as we saw Fort Lormie with the long drive there right. in the third quarter. Right. Lucas with the big firework touchdown. And wisely allowing the play clock to trickle down. Now showing five seconds as Jackson comes under center. They'll toss it to Deal, and he's going to get into the zone. Cue the fire. Go ahead, Effie. You uh, just, tell me. Just another you textbook touchdown That's what uh, for Lucas Cubs. And, again, I love the pitch sweep with the quarterback lead. Uh, quarterback ISO lead uh, with Grayson Jackson leading um, up front. So uh, the Lucas Cubs after after that coming out of the locker room, I think a little bit flat, which is uh, the extra point is good. But coming out of the locker room a little bit flat and um, the Redskins having a, a really nice first drive, I think the – Lucas Cubs are, are back refocused and their offense is you know, really going here in the second half. They got things humming now Absolutely. after a little bit of a sluggish start, as Effie mentioned. And they, they saved some pretty big fireworks for that last little display. Right. <laughs> right. Suckers were totally filling up the night sky. Brian and Effie James with you here tonight. And I got to shout out my neighbor and student over at Mansfield Christian, Sarah Porter, for filling in last second on some camera duties. I cannot tell you what a hard time I had trying to get somebody to fill this role. And with our new media program that we have with Mansfield Christian, Sarah's done an awesome job. One of the Great seniors job, over there. Sarah doing some high school soccer matches, didn't know the first thing about football, asked me who the quarterback was <laughs> and what is a snap at the beginning of the game. I got to admit, I was kind of that emoji with a smile on my face with a little sweat bead coming down. Right, right. But she's, she's starting to figure it out. Oh, Sarah's doing a great job, doing an awesome job. Line drive kick will run its way out of the back of the zone. So first down coming up from the 20 here for the Skins, who have shown that they can move the football a little bit so far here in this second half. But a lot of work to do now as you look at that Ohio Valley manufacturing scoreboard showing a 34-7 deficit. Right, and, and I think what they have to do at this point is uh, get back to those things, that tempo that they played with. It wasn't you know, so much about they were dominating. It was just the tempo. They played with a lot of tempo, a lot of energy. And they got to get back to that. They got to get back to that focus they had coming out of the locker room. Big hole here on first down. Nice. Goes for maybe about 18. One of the biggest plays so far of the night. Will Holland showed a nice little motor here in the third and fourth quarter. Right, and I think it was that tempo, that in and out of the huddle and coming off the line of scrimmage and, and using a variety of plays inside, outside, that really had the Lucas Cubs off balance here in that last drive. Straight ahead again with the run game. And we've seen this formation more often than not with Ellerman leading the way for Holland. And a quick huddle yet again here for Fort Lormie. Now with less than 10 minutes to play. Trips to the top of your screen, and it looks like it's a design quarterback run all the way. Maxwell dips his way through out across midfield. First down here for the Redskins. And again, I, th I think more than anything, this tempo is, has really got uh, the Lucas Cubs defense 
uh, off balance and the runs with Max Maurer and um, Holland with the, as the power runner and then keeping them off balance with Max Maurer as a runner and then throwing a couple passes every now and then. Uh, that was the key in that, that first drive that they had and getting back to that now with the with this swing pass here for looks like about a four or five yard pickup here on first down. And it's Holland again getting a lot of looks here in this second half. So they split Will out wide. And just a sophomore, this kid's going to be around for a while in the Fort Laramie program. And here he comes yet again. Cubs are ready for it. And I think we got some late flags coming in. I, I definitely saw, it looked like Braden Spittler got the back of his jersey grabbed right at the end and slung down. Yeah. Check this out right in the middle. There's a flag way down at the... Hmm, the 15-yard line? 15 Ain't nobody out there. All right, there was a deep route. They ran a deep route, but... Wow. Huh. I know they ran a deep route down there, but they didn't throw the football, so I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, I don't know what we can really take from this replay yeah. as we're on the action. It definitely looked like Spittler got the bad end of something there, so. <laughs> wow. Shaking his head, he understands. <laughs> Would have been a third down and six, wow. which now becomes third and 22. Wow, that, that penalty just cripples your drive. You know, it, it really just cripples your drive. You had a, a really good drive going on, and, and now the officials are going to gonna talk about something here. Well, I think they're going to... Well, they were discussing, is it second down or third down? And on this third down, Maurer has to escape and turns on the Jets down the far sideline. Solid run that time from Maxwell Maurer. Yeah, Max Maurer is, you know, he's an elusive quarterback. He's got some athletic ability and some speed. And... And able to get back a good chunk of yardage, but still brings up fourth in uh, a long 12, 13 yards. But since that, you know, this whole half has been all four, <laughs> all four down territory for the for the Redskins. Solid protection, able to bounce back in the pocket. Now escapes here near side, and Mauer's going to take off and scramble. Nowhere near what he needed. As the Cubs defense comes up with the stop again, Hawkinsmith was there. Saw they had a couple of spies waiting on him too, Effie. Yeah, and again, he had people, but they had great coverage and great pursuit. And, you know, that is just really good discipline defense. You know, the guys in coverage, they didn't come up where they understood that the first down marker was so far away he couldn't have ran to get it, so they stayed back in coverage and the pursuit was able to catch up with him. So good discipline defense that time by the Cubs. And this is where Lucas absolutely just grinds at you, mm -hmm. taking their time, playing discipline, and with this plethora of backs. Logan, yeah. Expected to probably take quite a bit of time off the clock, though another flag comes in, and this one after the play. Yeah, it's been a lot of flags after the play here. And, and this is probably our one, two, maybe our third or fourth personal foul or unsportsmanlike foul that we've seen. And this one's actually going to go against Lucas, so take a second look at it. Wow. Came from the official at the top of your screen. That was a sportsmanlike pancake block. Right there. Yeah, certainly looked like Buck Arnold just 
Ooh. Kind of dominating in that one-on-one -on -one matchup there. Did kick his leg a little strange at the end. So it'll put the Cubs in a bit of a hole here since it's after the snap. So second down. And they'll need a bundle. Might have even went backwards, though, on that second down play. Yeah, Jackson kept it all the way. And, wow, he – I don't even think he had a half second to think. Right. Good job again at the point of attack for the Redskins. And, uh, you know, penalties, as we can see, with both teams – the drives just stall. They just die with with these penalties, whether it's a hold or uh, any kind of personal foul. The it just it just kills your drive. It, whether it's just the momentum, it's so hard to come back from a ten or fifteen yard penalty in the midst of a drive. So now you got third and and forever uh, with a team who is who is used to running the football, and it, it just makes it tough. Dan Hawkins Smith on the carry. Not even a centimeter of space here for Hawkinsmith. Clearly the Redskins dialed in there off or defensively up front. So we're actually going to get a punt from the Lucas Cubs tonight. First one on the evening. Color standing back at his 20. And Barhorst are waiting for it at his 30-yard line. Color on the season, 15 punts, averaging about 35 per clip. And a fair catch called for. At the 28-yard line, that is where the Redskins' offense will take over. Just under six minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Lucas looking like they're going to get a quality victory here tonight. Much needed in their region 25. Where to start the day, they are just on the outside of the playoff picture in terms of hosting in round one. So this one likely would vault them into the top eight. We'll have more on that on the Friday Night Pigskin coming up 11.30 tonight. Travis Berardi, our bracketologist. <laughs> He has been talking <laughs> playoff numbers and formulas the last several weeks on there, and I just always nod my head, and I'm <laughs> right. sure he knows what he's talking about. Right. You just got to trust him. You got to trust him. But really, the true mathematician, Joe Idle, what a job that guy does. Well, my and for goodness. years, and for how long has Joe Idle been doing that? Like, I since mean, the whole, since they see. came out with this computerized playoff system, he's had it mastered. Yeah, you go to his website, and it dates back to the year 2000. Every team in the state, every matchup, every computer point documented wow. for the last 23 years. Wow. That is impressive. That is impressive. Caudill with the tackle brings up third and long here for the Skins. Well, and the thing about the playoffs here for, and the reason why I think, you know, home playoff positioning for a team like uh, Lucas is is important you know because you, you don't want to go on the road and um you, if you can help it you know uh, you know playing at home uh for for teams like lucas is is important and you get an opportunity for your fans to to see you and support you in the postseason and, and uh, so many teams sometimes never get that opportunity excellent scramble this time from maxwell mauer to pick up a Big first down as the clock stops, 421 showing. And you're absolutely right. The Cubs last year, I mean, they went down to the West Virginia border and won a game. I think they had to go to the opposite end of the state to win a game. I, I didn't really understand their region last year. They were all over the place. Finally got to come a little bit closer to home in that wild loss against Danville, which still I think Cubs fans are scratching their heads about how they let that one loose. Sure, sure. But man, the du the Blue Devils. I, I don't know if Lucas wants to play them this year. Yeah. That, well, I hope we get that matchup. Yeah. I'd, <laughs> I'd love to see it again. You know, that that's one, and I, and I'm sure, you know, really in their 
their heart. I'm sure Lucas would would love to to get that matchup again as as competitors. I'm I'm sure they'd like to see that again. Here comes another late hit flag. Wow. And I don't think there was any question about yeah. this one. First contact yeah. was made. Bowers out of bounds. And we'll check the number. Yeah, Grasson, yeah. Or Grayson Jackson made the tackle, and someone else delivered another blow. So to start the day, Lucas sitting at number 11 in Region 25. But you look at how close they are in terms of computer points with teams like Steubenville, Catholic Central, Toronto, and Lowellville. Very possible for them to jump, like I said, into that top eight. Then I'll check out the Region 27 playoff picture here for Fort Loramie. Excuse me, Region 28. And they're sitting at number nine tonight. So mm -hmm. this is going to be a really tough loss for them. Right. Could see them tumble as low as potentially 11th or 12th. As that's strung to the near side and winners been solid so far defensively for the Cubs in this contest. Makes another nice stop. Able to shed off his blocker there from A.J. Siegel. Come up to make the play. And, and great job stringing that play out. And, and one thing about perimeter plays we've seen a couple times tonight, the more you string it out, the tougher it is to hold those blocks. And we, we've seen a, a few holding penalties get called because when you try to, to hold blocks and the wider and wider they stretch it out, the harder and harder it is as a blocker to, to maintain that block. And, and that's, what, that's how you get those holding penalties sometimes. And um, uh, this time I think Lucas is going to decline this penalty and, and move it to third down. Uh, I think it'll, it think it'll be second, right? Oh, will it be second down? Yeah. Okay, second down here. So they had Siegel that you saw there with a little little push in the back of winners. But the Lucas coaching staff, I think, also just one in the clock to run, mm -hmm. declining that penalty. Right. The whistle here pre-snap allows this thing, or I should say it doesn't allow it, to go anywhere. And you're, well... The referees are confused whether it's second or right. third down, too. Well, I thought it was second. I thought that was a second down play on the last play. If they would have declined it, it would have made it third down. Okay. So it it is third down. You got it. Redskins offense facing a dozen yards here. Got to get inside the 25-yard line to pick up a first down. See the, the thing that I, I just that just gets under my when you run the play though it's it's all bets are off you can't call the play back. <laughs> but yeah I thought stuff like that only happened to the Cleveland Browns yeah <laughs> which how many spooky things yeah, happened to that franchise I know my goodness I know I mean other people are just like man you guys sulk all the time and it's like nah bro watch yeah, our games yeah we're trust me yeah. I still can't get over the Amari Cooper touchdown from a couple of weeks yeah, ago. You see snake, that one? We're snake oh bit. Oh, my gosh. I, yeah. yeah. Wild. We're snake bit. I don't know what that and, is. What, what, where's our quarterback? <laughs> he can't even come out and, like, stand on the sidelines for practice. I don't care if you're not practicing. They're keeping him inside so we can't even see what he's, he's up in, to. He's in seclusion. I, can't. I, I don't Oh. Oh, double tipped. Oh, and another late flag. This is probably going to be yeah. a late hit on the quarterback. And um, I think he hit him up around the helmet. I think that's going to be the, the big issue, I believe, as we, we watch this replay. Oh, that's a tight one. That's yeah, big stick one. there from yeah. Hawkins Smith. I mean, he's just a physical uh, football yeah. player. That's a tough one, though. 15-yard penalty. It's on a fourth down. Should be enough for a first down. Yeah, indeed. But this has turned into, you know, a, a bit of a, what was a, you know, coming out at the beginning of this half, looked like it was going to be, you know, get back into be a competitive game. It's gotten a little messy, um, you know, in terms of just, um, 
a lot of penalties, uh, a lot of stoppages in play. Um, but I do think that both teams are still playing hard, and and you do like to see that. Fort Army is still playing hard. They are they're trying to get, uh, trying to score here and and uh, compete. But but it is getting a little sloppy. So Braden Spittler actually emerged with the football at the end of that play. Fighting for it down there in the scrum. Two-yard pickup, second and eight. Nice. And Logan Toms yeah. just burst into the backfield. Yeah. yeah, Logan Toms untouched, just ran that thing down from the backside. And... Huge cheers here from the home fans. Logan's just such a leader and athlete on both sides of the football. Had the biggest play of the night, I think, by far, with that 70-yard touchdown yeah, that run on the big. response. Yeah, that was big. Ooh, nice shifty move from Holland. Was able to get away from Spittler, not the second wave. Check it out one more time on the TMS Plus digital marketing replay. Fancy feet right there. Yeah, nice move. He is stopped short, though, so it'll be another fourth down situation. Redskins were able to keep the offense out there via penalty last time. And they'll need nine yards here. And I really like, you know, last time down here, they ran that crossing route um, last time, and, and that was really effective. This time they're going to sprint out. Now we're back across his body. Heavy traffic. Did he sling it in there? Boy, that look. I think they may give it to him. Carter Eilman. The near side official the here is going to mark it a little. I think they're going to. Are they moving it? It's going to be close. It looks close, but they're moving the chains. First down. Wow, what a connection. Nice throw. So after a home and kitchen supply, first down, it's hauling to the left side. And though I think the Redskins would love to score, mm -hmm. also understanding short time here. Right. And maybe just run one more play. Sure. They will go no huddle. And running ahead again with Holland. Who seeps forward down to about the six yard line? Yeah, I'd be trying to get a they're trying to get a, another score on the board Why here. Not major way down here, right? Mauer off the oh, short throw snap. It. Don't throw it. Jackson <laughs> gets to oh. him with the exclamation point at the <laughs> end of the game. The Lucas Cubs. A big winner here tonight, 34 to seven. And a get right game for them in terms of the playoff picture with a whole lot of bonus points coming their way. Stick around for our post game show presented by Mechanics Bank that will feature an interview with our most valuable player. Drop us a comment, let us know who you think is worthy of being tonight's MVP. We'll have that analysis and more all coming up on the other side. Keep it here. Are you ready for the comeback? I was out there. Let's unretire. Why not? Yes, hey, Grandpa! Grandpa! I still got it! Hey, hey, I need that senior discount. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> Unretirement? Who'd be dumb enough to do that?
I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. generous sponsors for allowing this game to be alive and free tonight. Coming to you from Bob Winefield. Big shout out first to the Lucas Athletic Department, along with North Central State College, who are providing individuals with the knowledge, skills, and inspiration to succeed in their chosen paths. Scout Construction LLC, they are hiring now. Holler at Josh Mobley, owner over there. If you are a skilled carpenter looking for some new work, Frito Lay, driven and inspired by one purpose, food that matters for life's moments. TMS Plus Digital Marketing, digital marketing for local businesses. Mechanics Bank, Richland County's only independent community bank. Ohio Valley Manufacturing, heavy gauge stamping and precision blanking services, also hiring now. And BS Media Productions, need a commercial to showcase your business or promote that you're hiring? BS Media Pros is the most affordable, high-quality production company in North Central Ohio. Check us out on Facebook. We'll be right back with final stats as well as an interview with our Scout Construction LLC Player of the Game.
We return now with our most valuable player presented by BS Media Productions, and we have got the Lucas quarterback slash defensive back, Grayson Jackson, joining me now. And a uh, really solid night for you from the times that I've seen you this season. I think that you were the most explosive in the running game. Tell me just about the collection of talent that you have in that backfield and, and how you help complement them and burst away for some nice big runs tonight. We uh, so all starts with the O-line. They block great all practice. We have solid practice. They're always blocking the whistle, make sure they're working hard. The rest of the backfield always blocks when they're not running the ball. Always make sure that everyone else is getting a chance to be their best and make a play. This was a Fort Loramie team that came in, and they have really been riding a really hot wave defensively. You held them to just one first down in that first half and really shut them down in the second. What do you think you did to kind of stymie them throughout the course of the night? I think this week... It was probably one of our best weeks of practice. We worked hard, had a lot of enthusiasm that kept us going throughout the week. A lot of people were sick, but we kept pushing through. And we just played a great game against them. They're a really good team, and we just played the way we should. And you guys, too, you've won six out of your last seven. So tell me about the momentum that you feel like is, is starting to accumulate behind this team and the way you've been playing. I think the momentum's good. It carries us, gives us a chip on our shoulder every time we play a big team like that that we may have lost to in the past. That makes us just want to keep going and get better every week. 100th career win for your head coach, Scott Spittler. What does that guy mean to Cubs football and basically just this whole community out here? He's a really important person. He teaches all of us young men how to be respectful, play hard, have a work ethic, and just do our best. Well, a huge win for you guys tonight probably vaults you to a place where you're probably right there uh, looking at a Week 11 game here at home. If you can take care of business again in Week number 10, just how satisfying does that sound that I probably think that you punch your ticket back into the postseason 10th straight year so and then you might be playing back here at home again? It would be great for us to have a home playoff game to get the really momentum started for the playoffs and the pre postseason to go. Well, congratulations, Grayson, over 100 rush yards for you tonight, even through it for 27. Go ahead, look into the camera, give any shout-outs you want. A shout-out to my mom and dad for always making me push hard, work hard, and always have a good work ethic throughout the week and my whole life. My BS Media Production MVP, Grayson Jackson. Thanks for the time, buddy. Are you ready for the comeback? I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why, Matt? Yes, he's back. Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? I still got it. Hey, hey, I need that senior discount. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> Unretirement? Who'd be dumb enough to do that? We now return with our Mechanics Bank post-game show. And excellent win across the board here for the Lucas Cubs. Effie, they played with, you know, a lot of passion out here. Very dominant in the first half. And even though Fort Loramie moved the ball a little bit more in the second half, still great on both sides of the football. This was just a quality team win from start to finish. Yeah, I thought they were, they were dominant on both sides of the football. Uh, for the most part, they controlled the line of scrimmage. And they, they really had... Uh, they executed their game plan, and, and, and I thought when you we talk about coaches having a game plan to come in um, on any given night, that's what it's all about. The coaches come in with a game plan, but it's up to the players to execute. And tonight, I thought the uh, Lucas Cubs players done a great job of executing uh, Coach Spittler's game plan uh, to perfection. And, and uh, Grayson talked about it um, in his interview about how they had a great week of practice, and it showed. They came out like they had a great week of practice. They have been practicing those blocking schemes, and they really executed very well tonight. It showed from the beginning. Threw it for 27 yards tonight, but the run game solid the entire course yeah. of the action. Over 300 for them again. I think this right. is the third straight week that they have been able to do that, forcing a couple of turnovers and just nine first downs to a Fort Loramie team that they've been beating some pretty quality squads on their journey over here to Bob Wine Field, and Lucas just way too much for them. Yeah, rock solid performance, and you know, again, I, I would say I'm more, I'm just as impressed defensively with the Cubs 
in, in their performance on the defensive end. You know, I think in the first half they had held the offense to 35 uh, total yards right. and, and things like that. And, and, you know, you take away that first drive that they had in the second half, uh, they completely dominated uh, Fort Laramie on, on offense. So, um, you know, Coach Spittler is going to take a look at the film and, and they're going to have to clean up. They had some some penalties in this game, and I'm sure he's going to look at the, the penalties and, and say that's a point of emphasis for them going into the postseason. That's something that, you know, you're, you're going to have to clean up. You know, those those are types of things that could change a game. So when he looks at this game, you're going to be able to – this is the type of game you're going to say, okay, we're going to play some really quality teams. So you're going to look at this game and say, okay, these are the areas that we have to clean up. Penalties. We're going to have to get more proficient in these areas. We can't come out of the locker room and let a team just drive down the field and score. Sure. So there's some things that, that you definitely can take away from this game. But overall, just a dominant performance by Lucas Cubs tonight. And even though it's Friday the 13th out here, nothing <laughs> scary for Lucas as they drop 34 on the board. And they get to play right back here at the Friendly Confines. Three straight weeks at home for Lucas to close out the regular season against another team that's coming in. I didn't see what Arlington did tonight, but potentially six wins for them. Another chance for Lucas to vault themselves even higher in the Region 25 standings. Yeah, and another opportunity to play a a quality opponent and you know it's all in preparation and, and Lucas has a, a really good it's all about opportunities to get better each week and um, to be playing your best at the end of the season and, and that's what any coach would want to be playing your best and peaking at the right time we've seen a lot of teams peak too early we've seen a lot of teams not get going until late uh, so you really want to be peaking at the right time and, and uh, that's what uh, this team looks like uh, they're trying to do and Fort Laramie um, on the other hand still has some work to do but you can see we saw flashes of what that team could be we saw some some good things uh, from them tonight they they certainly have some some players and they have some things that uh, were good you can see why they've got some wins some quality wins um, but they've got some things they've got to work on uh, as well moving forward. Yeah, tough blow for them in their region in terms of the playoff picture. They'll have to bounce back next week against Lima Central Catholic, a team that beat Lucas just a couple of weeks ago. Do got to thank all of our generous sponsors for coming together, helping bring you this action live and free tonight, including Ohio Valley Manufacturing, along with BS Media Productions, Mechanics Bank, Frito Lay, TMS Plus Digital Marketing and North Central State College. For Effie James and Sarah Porter making her OH Report debut tonight Great for job, football. Sarah. Great job, Sarah. I'm Brian Skorowski saying so long here from Bob Winefield. Don't forget to tune in to the Friday Night Pigskin Week 9 edition coming up at 11.30 p.m. All the highlights in action and, of course, playoff points with Travis that you need to see. We're out of here, though.